header. In this video, we will be upgrading this HP ZBook 15G2 laptop from Windows 7 to Windows 11. Inserted the Windows 11 USB drive in one of the ports. Power on the laptop and press F9. And it should allow me to yeah, ignore this error, it's from a bad battery. Uh, ooh, not seeing the USB drive. Oh, come on. Still doesn't see it. Let's go to BIOS and see if there's something that is not allowing it to boot from there. Ah, boot options. Huh. USB device boot is disabled. Whoa! Save. Save changes. Yes! And now plug this again in the proper port. Save changes and exit. Man, that sucks. Why was that disabled from the default? F9 again. Yeah, and we have it now. Jeez, this was weird. Okay. Let's wait for Windows to load. I am in a bit of a hurry. And we got an error. Just so you see, Windows 7 is loading absolutely normally without any errors whatsoever. Everything is working. So it doesn't have an issue, but uh, something is still wrong. Just did a quick test with uh, another USB drive and a Windows 10 on it. Perfectly working. What I'm going to do now is put Windows 11 on this in exactly the same way I put it on this one and see if that will work. Guess what? This is actually Windows 11. So there are two variants. Either this uh, is a different Windows 11 that doesn't have the issue that this one has with some drivers who know some driver who knows what driver or just the fact that this is USB 2.0 not 3.0 could either of them be uh, the trouble or the brand and model of the device so it's a bit weird so try to change the the model of the device that you are booting from and also try to change the Windows version, not from 11 to 10 or something like that. Just a different 11, maybe a bit older or something like that. But yeah, for me already 11 on this. I thought it's uh, 10, but no, it's 11. Uh, and I missed the the moment to to push F9. So let's boot from that again and install Windows 11. It's weird, man. It's Computers are weird, honestly, and they don't always make sense. You just have to try different uh, things and uh, just hope for the best. And look at this. This is different. So I'm thinking that from this USB 2, it's actually booting into legacy mode. And from this, it was always trying to boot uh, in a different mode. Or maybe they changed that rotated thingy between uh, two Windows 11 versions. It's really difficult to tell. What I can do after I install Windows 11 from this because I know for a fact that it's working, I'm going to try and put the latest version on this. So these two will be identical, just different brands and models. And if this still works, then the problem is just this particular device. Anyway, let's install. Okay. English, 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 keyboard is US, yep, good enough for me, install now, hopefully our partitions are recognized, so I can uh, format the C drive, ooh, I need to enter the product key, I can either do this now, or later after I start Windows, but I will do it now, and it's entered, and let's click next. In case we get an error, we can still enter this and activate Windows later when Windows 11 is already installed. But hopefully it will directly accept it. This is the easiest way to say like that. And it didn't give an error for the key, so it accepted. But we have this particular error. 
And this needs to be fixed in a completely different way. This particular laptop does not have the minimum requirements for Windows 11. So I'm going to show you that. So to fix this problem, we kind of shut off the laptop because we need to go from start. I didn't realize this is such a, uh, an old laptop that basically doesn't meet Windows 11 requirements, but it actually makes sense. So press F9 on an HP ZBook at least. Boot from your uh, USB thumb drive. I ignore the battery error, that's different. And uh, wait until we get the first splash screen. Actually not splash screen, the screen where it will show you to change, to select language and keyboard layout. And at this particular screen we uh, press shift and F10. Let me show you the keyboard because many people will be asking about this. My tripod will squeak. And I'm going to get back so you can literally see what I'm pressing. So it's shift and F10. And we get this administrator command prompt. Camera show us what I'm writing there. So let's type some commands in here uh, to make some ch uh, changes to the registry so it will not check if it uh, meets the minimum requirements and it's working even if it doesn't meet those. It's yeah, just Microsoft. And I haven't used this method in a while, so I'm literally watching one of my old videos to see exactly how I do this. So, just want to mention something else. Some computers do not default to function keys uh, from the start. Some computers actually default to, who knows, multimedia keys or something like that, because these are double function keys. On those, you need to press function Fn plus shift plus F10. F10. So function shift F10, if shift F10 doesn't work directly. But on this one, it works. So now, reg edit. And let me go closer to the screen itself. Yeah, this is awesome camera work right here, but I don't want to miss anything. People say that I'm faking videos. I'm not. That would be just stupid. H, H key local machine. I think if I remember the right, either software or system. System and setup. And I think here we need to create a new uh, a new key. New key. Oh, I didn't select anything, so it didn't know where to create them. New key. And the name L. A B config so lab config hit enter in here right click new D word 32 bit value bypass TPM check and now double click it and in here change the value to one so it will bypass the trusted platform module check. Again, right click, the word 33 bit value, bypass, secure, boot, oh, sorry, check. Depending on your laptop, you might have secure boot. So this might not be needed on all laptops, but uh, it's easier just to make it and be done with it. So bypass TPM check, bypass secure boot check. Also make sure that secure boot check is set to one. So double click it and change the value to one. TPM check is already one because we changed it prior. Now we can close this, close also this and continue with our setting as if this computer is fully Microsoft uh, Windows 11 compliant. And now I will enter the key. And as you can see, we don't get the error anymore. Uh, so we have checked the... Um, we, we don't check anymore the TPM and secure boot. And the key was accepted. Next. Uh, it's a custom for us. 
and this is the drive where we want to install it so uh, we do a format of it but let me check the owner of with the owner of the laptop to make sure i can format this drive i don't want to damage anything although i know for a fact that the pictures are there but i i want to make sure that there's that there's nothing in windows be back in a second yep checked with the owner he prefers to have uh, the c drive uh, wiped so I am wiping uh, the drive. Yes, we have 100 megs of unallocated space in here. Uh, not caring about that. It's too small to try and move partitions. Uh, or maybe... Oh, am I doing stupid thing? I might regret this. But Windows 11 kind of needs uh, some weird partitions. And my battery is dying on the phone. And I will create a new one. And you will see this is the max and it will create some partitions uh, of its own just look at it system reserved do you see it here and pictures still safe pause in romanian and now on c drive we are installing windows and it's working come on do say 100 uh, 1 percent at least so i see that it's working ah okay so it is working Awesome. Let it do its thing and get back to you when anything else happens apart from just copying stuff. It has rebooted, it's doing its thing, basically unattended. I'm not sitting next to it to to wait for something to happen until it uh, requests me to input some data, who knows what. There was another reboot and it's continuing uh, the unattended process. And it's waiting for info from me oh i cannot press the first letter literally annoying why don't you make the menu as they were when you could press a letter and it would take you to the first country with that letter downgrades people downgrades in terms of software usability kind of annoying but hey I still uh, accept Windows 11 as the operating system of the moment. Keyboard layout is good, yes. Skip second layout, I don't care about that. Let's connect to a network, yep, right now, be back in a second. Connect it to the network, next. Give a name to the device. This is not the account name. Don't be fooled because if you give it the name that you want to give to the account, you will not be able to name the account the same thing. So this is ZBook, the laptop, and the account uh, will be named later. In our case, set up for personal use. So this is the workaround. In the email field, put A around a.com and just hit next don't worry this is just a fake account and enter any password whatever you want it will try to do its thing something went wrong yep sure did click next and now you can uh, set your local account to whatever you want and it will work so hit next at this point you can simply not enter a password if you don't want one. Just hit next and we are done. This is how you create an offline account for Windows 11. It involves a bit of trickery, but hey, at least there still is a way to do this because otherwise this would be highly annoying. So we have our offline account. Now uh, we don't want location. Don't want to find anything. Accept. No inking and typing. Come on, are there no Taylor experience? Jesus. Are there more of this? No. But for uh, Android, we most uh, let it do these things that we don't let uh, Microsoft and Windows. But hey, it is what it is. Next step, so it's almost finished now. And if at the point of uh, uh, creating account 
an offline account you saw the resolution change? That's because it seems Windows is actually searching for drivers over your uh, network while you are still installing it, while you are still doing settings. It's searching for drivers in the background, which is awesome. I never knew that, but now I realized until I was searching for a way to bypass the online account. So, nice Microsoft, nice. Hopefully this is over soon and we are booted into Windows. Yeah, I let my phone charge just for a little bit. If I check here, only three drivers are not installed. On Windows 7, way more of them were not installed. Ah, man, I do, why do I hate drivers this much? Maybe I needed to install them so many times. So 8086-8C3A. Let's hope this one is easier to get. This one seems to be the Intel management engine. Let's download it. Why are you taking it to a new page? Why is this a thing? Who from HP thought that this is a proper thing to take you to another page? Ah, anyway, let's install it. Hopefully now we will have some uh, stuff disappearing from that missing driver list. And look at this, I need to accept uh, everything, an arm and leg, give everything away. Uh, yeah. Drivers are highly, highly, highly annoying to install. Uh, yeah, finish. Please tell me. Oh, something happened. Ooh, so I needed to install this to actually have that one disappear, the first one. So somehow it was actually included in this one, not in the one that I first installed. So now let me get uh, rid of also uh, this one in details. Come on, come on, come on. On our where are these? 8087. Uh, ooh, this is something else. 808707 DC. This is something else. I'm literally on weird driver websites, which uh, most times are just a stupid trap and. Uh, you don't get anything uh, useful out of them, but hey, this time, uh, so what, what did you do? Let's, let me see, uh, update driver, browse my computer, browse, I think in downloads it put something, yep, here it put something, okay, force it to try here, next. Yay! Damn it! We have all the drivers installed. Finally! Awesome! Yeah, I have a few dialog boxes open. Don't need them anymore. Yay! Installed all the drivers. And we're finally done. We have installed everything. This laptop is working perfectly with Windows 11 on it. Absolutely zero issues. Performance no problems, it has uh, 2 gigs dedicated uh, GPU, 16 gigs of memory, uh, an i7 4810MQ CPU, which is perfectly fine, an SSD, uh, 500 gig, it's a perfect laptop that can run perfectly Windows 11, no good reason for it not to run it. So yeah, hope this video helps you, in which case please give it a like, check out my other videos, and as always, see you in the next one.